So this is going to be um, me talking through the answer key to this worksheet. And uh, one or two of them are going to spend a little bit more time on than others. And it's a combination of the IR, the mass spec, and the NMR we have been learning. So depending upon what you're given in the problem, um, you have a formula, IR, NMR, and the NMR is going to be detailed for you. So question number one, uh, you're given a formula. You were given a formula. Uh, so always uh, do the first step is to do degrees of unsaturation. So I end up with a degree of unsaturation of one and notice I have one oxygen in the formula. So that's gonna lead me to believe that I have a ketone or an aldehyde in there. I then look at my IR and I see that I have single bonds. I have a strong stretch around 1715. So that's gotta be my ketone, that's gotta be my ketone. So again, a ketone has a double bond oxygen somewhere in the formula, and I have my um, NMR. So again, this is the quartet, singlet, and triplet. So my suggestion with all of these is to take a pencil, <clears throat> draw something, and see what kind of chemical shift you should show up, meaning where should it show up on your table, and also how would it split. So because this has four carbons, draw four carbons in a row and put a double bond oxygen somewhere. Well, there's not many places you could put it, to be honest, um, because you can't put it on the end because then it would be an aldehyde. So really there is just one place you could put it is more in the middle here. And you really couldn't put it there either. But again, um, you wanna look at what is the splitting pattern and see what you got. Usually if you have a singlet and you know you have a ketone, you probably have a CH3 somewhere off on the side that is right next to that carbonyl, that C double bond O. So that singlet is going to be here. And it usually does surprisingly show up around two, but this one isn't showing up exactly in the same spot. So don't overthink it and just go, okay, that has to be my singlet. Then I look at these uh, two hydrogens um, and I have nothing on this neighbor and I have three on this neighbor. So that has to be the quartet. So is that one next to or close to that two to 2.7? Yes. So that one is a little bit more appropriate in terms of its chemical shift. And then this one, which again, depending upon the color that I was using, um, is your triplet. Is your triplet around 0.9? No, but it's relatively close because your neighbor has two hydrogens there. So that is your triplet. All right, number two. So this one you had to do, um, I was giving you the percentages. So this would be from a mass spec and I'm including a chlorine. A chlorine is gonna be interesting on this one. IR strong peak and then a broad strong peak at 3,300 is going to tell you you probably have an OH somewhere in there. And then the molar mass peak is at 95. Molar mass peak is at 95. So your percentages, again, my way I'm going to show you is I'm going to take the percentage and multiply it by the molar mass peak to find my um, number. Okay, so that's what I did down here. So I took my percentage, multiplied it by the 95, <clears throat> and then I divide it by the respective molar mass of the element itself. So again, 12, 1, 16, and 35.5 is the molar mass of each one of those. So you have a 3, 7, a 1, and a 1. So if I have chlorine in the formula, please remember when you're doing degree of unsaturation, it counts as a hydrogen. So that's why you have a three minus eight over two plus one. You're never going to get a decimal in the degree of unsaturation, so always consider that. So I have no, again, it told me that I have all single bonds up here. So I have an alcohol or an ether because I have the oxygen in there and I have a chlorine somewhere in that molecule. So the chlorine is going to kind of play havoc because the chlorine is electronegative and chlorines are going to show up that hydrogen that's on the carbon that has the chlorine is gonna be in the three to four range. So I like this one as an example, just because you haven't seen many with the chlorines yet. So I am gonna put the OH somewhere in this molecule. And to be honest, you just gotta have to play with it. 
So I have a singlet here. So that's probably going to be my hydrogen that is on the OH. So I'm going to color that the orange one. I have a triplet and a triplet. So both of these are triplets. And then I have a quintet down here. So triplet, triplet means I only have two neighbors. I only have two neighbors. So I have a situation here where I have hydrogens that are on the OH and I have hydrogens that are on the chlorine. Why did I put it there? Because if I put the chlorine here, I would have three neighbors here and three neighbors would have a different splitting pattern. So I'm gonna put the chlorine here and see that this would have two neighbors, that would give me a triplet. And I have this triplet here. Now, if I gave you this on an assessment of some sort, I wouldn't penalize you if you put one triplet as uh, the one of OH or the one triplet that was on CL because CL on your splitting, excuse me, your chemical shifts, the chlorine is gonna be the three to four and that's somewhere in that range. And then if I have something attached to an OH, I don't really have, um, I have a 3.4 to four. So I am assuming that the hydrogens that are on the OH are a little bit more what we call downfield. So that's why I colored it the pink one um, rather than this one. Uh, but honestly, it, it really would depend upon the molecule itself. So as long as you know that both of those are the triplets, that's all you need to know. And then here, this is your quintet. So whenever you're in the middle of the molecule, chances are you're going to have bigger splitting patterns because if I am the yellow hydrogens here, my neighbors are these two and these two. And please remember, the hydrogen that's on the OH is blocked. Okay, You do not see that hydrogen on that carbon. So you only see these two and these two, which makes it a quintet, which makes it a quintet. All right, number three. Uh, percentages again, I have a peak, strong peak, I have my molar mass peak, and I have a quartet, a singlet, and a triplet. So I don't, uh, so I do my uh, formulas, so I get a four, a eight, and a two. My degree of unsaturation tells me I have a one. So because I have two oxygens, it's a carboxylic acid or an ester, those are my two. But because I don't have a broad peak on the IR, there is no broad peak on the IR, so I can't have a carboxylic acid. So it's got to be an ester. And please remember, an ester is going to have a C double bond OO, and then you're going to have carbons on either side. And how the setup is is going to be dependent upon the splitting patterns. So again, I have a quartet, a singlet, and a triplet. So this is how it works out in the molecule. So this would be my singlet because again, it doesn't have any neighbors. And then my quartet and my triplet has to be on the oxygen because my quartet way down field here is influenced by the oxygen, influenced by the oxygen that it's attached to. So whenever you have an ester, you have to consider that esters, when you have the oxygen end, you're gonna have it between 3.7 and 4.1. So that hydrogen on that end of the molecule is going to be there. While this green one or the singlet that we see is usually going to be around two to 2.1. And you will see that that's a little less than two, but it's still the only way that that could be a singlet. And then our traditional triplet is usually going to be on the end of the molecule. So that is why you have to have two carbons here and only one carbon here. Because if I had another carbon here, I wouldn't have this singlet. So that's where you kind of have to play with some of these. All right, and finally, number four, I did the formula already for you. I have a broad straw peak at 3,300. So that's telling me I have an OH. So putting it maybe in the middle to start, um, but you could put it on the ends. It doesn't really matter. So I have a trip uh, doublet here, which is traditionally on the end of the molecule. So again, think of that OH as being blocked. So this could be a doublet because I only have one H that it's seeing because this is being blocked by the oxygen. So if you wanna put an X there, you could do that. So this has gotta be your doublet. And then you have a septet and a singlet. So again, 
whenever you have big splitting patterns, your hydrogen's got to be in the middle uh, because you've got to have a lot of neighbors. And here I have a total of six neighbors. So that's got to be seven. So that's got to be your septet. And then this setup here is influenced by that oxygen. Um, so that is why you see it a little bit further downfield than a traditional CH3. Um, so that's got to be the only explanation for that singlet there. Um, I'm sorry, this doublet is incorporating all of those hydrogens that you see here. That's why it's so large. I'm getting myself confused. Uh, the singlet here is that OH singlet. So that's got to be this one here. So again, repeating, those are your doublets, that's your singlet, and that's your septet.